Your first dance is usually the final part of your wedding day formality, so for some people, getting up and dancing in front of your friends and family can be really overwhelming. In this episode of the Plan My Wedding podcast, we sat down with Susie Budd, a professional dance teacher who specializes in wedding first dances. Susie shares some great tips of how to improve your first dance, and we also recorded a video tutorial to talk you through a simple first dance routine, so make sure you check that out. If you are planning a wedding, listen up. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Plan My Wedding podcast. Today, if you're watching it on YouTube or Facebook, you'll see that we are in a dance studio. And that's because today's episode is all about the first dance, the dreaded first dance for some. Sat opposite me is Susie from First Dance UK. Susie is a professional dance teacher who specializes in wedding first dances. So Susie, welcome. Thank you very much for having me in such beautiful surroundings as no well. No worries at all. Thanks so much for joining us and thanks so much for recording your tutorial earlier. So if anyone hasn't seen it yet, we recorded a tutorial uh, with a lovely couple and we basically demonstrated how you can learn a simple first dance from home. So we put together, so, well I didn't, Susie put together four, four moves uh, and then put them into a, a choreographed routine. So if anyone um, wants to see that, please check it out on YouTube and Facebook. Um, Susie, today we're talking first dances. You're the person to talk to Thank and you very um, much. we're going to talk everything from you know starting at the very beginning if someone knows nothing about dancing to being comfortable on the wedding day and all the things in between but before we get into that it'd be amazing if you could tell us a little bit about your background and introduce First Dance UK please. Sure. Well, my name is Susie Budd and I am a professional dancer. I trained um, in Covent Garden when I was 16, went to train as a classical ballerina, um, but soon realised that I quite enjoyed a bit more kind of jazz hands and a bit more freedom within the dance world. So obviously ballet is very disciplined. Um, so trained more intensely in that way. So I've been on cruise ships, in musicals, pantomimes, summer seasons, you name it. I've danced my way around the place. Um, and then latterly went more into dance teaching and choreography so um, I was very fortunate to be employed by First Dance UK for a number of years now so that's been marvellous and amazing to see the um, development of gorgeous couples getting them ready for their wedding dance. So First Dance UK is based all around the UK we have over 800 teachers dotted about so you can find us anywhere um, and in that time it's been established since 2003 um, we have helped over 8,000 couples with their specific needs of their routine, albeit from very basic moves up to the show-stopping, dirty dancing moments. And does it matter what kind of um, ability, dancing ability that someone has to work with first dance? Do you work with complete beginners or do you work with, just work with people who want to learn like a full-blown kind of dance routine? No, we totally work with absolutely anybody. In fact, my personal favourite couples are the ones who uh, are lacking in confidence when they start and sort of just like the ugly duckling, you see them sort of blossom and come through once you've worked with them over, over a number of weeks. Cool. So I guess you've seen the very best and maybe some of the worst of, the, of people kind of with first dances. And I think... The perfect place to start here is to talk about nerves and awkwardness around first dance. So obviously we record a lot of first dances and I think the first thing that people are most nervous about on a wedding day, more maybe more from the groom side, is the speech. And a very close second is the first dance. And I think until they've got over the first dance, they're kind of on edge during the... And, and brides as well, but I see it more with grooms. Um, why do people get so nervous and why do people kind of dread the first dance, do you think? I think it's that moment of realisation when all eyes are totally focused on you. I know that sounds crazy because obviously you've had the wedding, the most important part, you've done your vows and everyone's watching, but obviously you're, you're totally into each other at that moment and you can, you can pretty much forget that everyone's there. But the build up to a first dance, there's normally an announcement, you know, you're brought onto the floor, there's high expectations. Um, and I think it can just, yeah, hit people inside and go, oh, squeaky bum moment. <laughs> Everyone is looking, and especially now with you guys doing fabulous photography and, and videoing of first dances, it's there forever, isn't it? So, so um, yeah, I think, I think there's just people put maybe a bit more pressure on themselves. Do you think the pressure comes from wanting that perfect photo? Like, do you think, for example, do you think either the bride or groom from our experience, it tends to be the bride wants that photo. So then the, the groom obviously has a lot of pressure on him, on him to kind of 
do well in the dance do you think that's what like a big yeah factor? yeah i think so and i think it also stems from you know every little girl's dream of being whisked around a dance floor by the handsome prince kind of thing so i think there's an element of mainly ladies have danced more naturally not naturally as in dance more naturally but they've had more experience of dance albeit you know when they're younger than guys have so I think yeah they're they're definitely wanting something more and the guys are just like please let it be over (laughs) well I guess like away from a wedding anyway dancing a lot of people kind of just hate it they hate they just feel so (laughs) awkward yes um and that's like after a few drinks they feel a bit more comfortable. Like, I, I don't particularly hate dancing, but I don't particularly want to do it all the You'd time. After not. a few drinks, I'm all right. Okay. So I guess those nerves anyway, the awkwardness of dancing, and then put yourself in front of all your friends and family with cameras on you and photographers and videographers and maybe some lights on you and the DJs announcing you. I guess it's just the most nerve-wracking thing. I've not done it yet, but I just, I just see so many people just crumble when it comes to it. Absolutely. I think it is, it is that fact. So that's why we at First Dance, you know... It, we're kind of 50-50, it's 50% building people's confidence and it's 50% giving them the steps to enable them to feel confident on the dance floor. It's really important to, when you go into someone's home where you do the lessons, just to make them feel totally comfortable from the moment you step through the door. That's half the battle, in fact, that if a couple are nervous about doing the first dance, then um, You've, you, you go in the house and just totally put them at ease, put the kettle on, have a chat and make them see that, you know, dancing isn't as hard as you think it is. <laughs> so um, if you're watching this, you'll see obviously we're in a dance studio. We've just filmed a tutorial that will be available after we release this podcast. So if you're listening now, you can go and watch this tutorial. And this tutorial was teaching someone how to do a basic first dance routine. Um, and I guess the aim of this video and this podcast is to get people away from that I think it's really British to kind of, if you're nervous on a dance floor, to grip onto your partner and not even look up and and not even move and you just kind of shuffle Shuffle around a bit. I would love us with this video and this podcast to get people away from that. And maybe more like, not over the top, not like the American styles where it's like crazy dances, but just comfortable. Because it is like, it's it's your first dance with your, you know, husband or wife. So you've got to enjoy it, right? You don't hate every moment of it. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, funny you should say that is because like a a two minute routine of just clinging on to each other and shuffling around awkwardly feels like a lifetime. Whereas if actually you take a few lessons or even just look at the tutorial and pick up those moves, that two and a half, two minutes will fly by in the blink of an eye because you're focused on something. You're focused on each other, you're focused on concentrating on some moves and it takes away all that complete awkwardness of you, you almost forget, almost forget that everyone's there. <laughs> cool. So let's take it back to the start then. Uh, let's say, I don't know, maybe there's a year till your wedding date. You're really nervous. You're not a dancer. Where, what should people do? Where can they start? What's the first thing they should do? They've never danced before properly. They're really nervous. What do they do? What do they do? Well, first things first, you, don't, you know, actually stand close to each other. I know this sounds ridiculous because this is the person that you love and you're marrying and want to spend the rest of your life with. But there's a, there's a difference between casually holding hands or sitting next to each other on the sofa. But it feels really different to hold someone really close in a dance in a dance format. So whether that's in um, a traditional hold that you see, you know, on the Strictly kind of programs, or whether it's more of a casual just hand hold, it's some couples find that really awkward so you get past that the very first thing to do get used to just being really close looking each other in the eyes preferably without giggling but if you giggle it's fine (laughs) and just to take away that awkwardness because that that is definitely something that people go oh gosh we've actually never danced like this together you know everyone dances in clubs and and at family weddings and that sort of thing but yeah it's, it's i guess it's just a bit more intense Well, it is. It's a completely different experience, isn't it? Like you said, dancing in bars or clubs. I wouldn't even call it dancing. People are just like huddled (laughs) together. You know what I mean? Like on a crowded dance floor. It's a completely different experience to like hold your partner and Mm -hmm. do like a kind of almost like a choreographed routine. So yeah, I guess that's, that's great advice to start with. 
Should they consider their song early on, do you think? Because there's so many different types of songs that people can go for. There are, there are. I think um, the song is, is pretty vital to it. I mean, most couples have got their special song anyway. Um, so, you, you, you know, go with that. It needs to be something that means something to you because you're going to bring a better performance to your first dance then. But equally, if you know the song really well, it means that when we fit any steps to it, you're comfortable and familiar with the phrasing of the music or lyrics and that just all helps in securing the dance and making you feel confident quicker um but yeah there are definitely songs to avoid anything sort of a bit too fast there's you know people go oh we really love this like ibiza track <laughs> which is great but then they want a waltz to it and that's not going to fit if you're happy to just go for it and and have more of a eclectic mix of choreography and more Club Ibiza style, then perfect. But if you want something to look elegant and traditional, then go with a slightly slower tempo. Do you get that a lot then? That maybe a couple come to you and they've picked their song and they go, oh, we want this dance and they just, they just don't go at all. Do you kind of say, you're going to have to change your song there? It's, yeah, obviously in a really diplomatic way. I would never, get, especially if it's really special to somebody. And we try and make it work, but to get the best out of people and to get especially if, if they're really adamant about the way it looks then you've got to yeah you've got to diplomatically bring them around to another way of thinking or just yeah do you have any other song choices do do factors such as what the couple are wearing d dictate what song they have for example there must be restrictions surely with what kind of dress the bride has on, how, t how tight the groom's suit is, if he's got like a waistcoat done up. I mean, does clothing affects what kind of song they should go for, do you think? I don't think it affects the song as such um, because any dance teacher choreographer worth their salt can, can adapt anything to fit, um, to fit their needs. But it's definitely a factor. I always have a chat with um, the bride and groom. Well, I take, take the bride separately sometimes obviously because there's the old adage of the groom not knowing about the dress. So we have a little chat, um, if she can show me any photos, just so you can kind of glean the restrictions of the dress. But yeah, equally, um, guys' trousers are getting tighter. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, it's a factor. It's just to bear in mind when you're putting the routine together. Because obviously, I mean, we could go for a big deep lunge, a nice dip, uh, trouser split, I mean, maybe that would be great on the video, but it's probably not what you want on and your wedding day. shoes as well, I guess. Slippy dance floors, shoes, very common. Shoes, yeah. Always check if you've got um, rubber soles for guys are a little bit easier because then you've got a nice, a nice firm grip on the dance floor. Um, and ladies, ladies are always a little bit slippy. There's not, there's not a great deal you can do about that. And obviously, they're normally quite expensive shoes, so you don't want to start taking them down to the cobblers and getting them sorted. But a little hack for that, actually, if you get to your um, wedding venue, and I know you've got tons of other things on their mind on the day, but um, if the dance floor is very slippy, um, and you feel a little bit conscious, just speak to the venue and they can just put, you ask them to put a thin layer of Coca-Cola on the dance floor and that will just give it the right element of stickiness and slippiness. Oh, so, wow. top a, tip for you there. Tip. That's a good tip. Another one as well I've heard is to get sandpaper and rough up the bottom of your shoes and that helps down the aisle as well so you don't slip over. So you don't slip. Yeah, that is a good one. That's good to see. We're full of it So here. you got some sandpaper and some Coke, you know what to do. <laughs> Coca-Cola yeah. that is. Um, Put that on the list of to do for the wedding. <laughs> that's it. So let's just say someone wants a choreographed dance. First of all, when people hear, when I hear choreographed dance, if someone, if, if my fiance said to me, right, we're doing a choreographed dance, I think, oh, bloody hell, like, is this going to be some mad dance routine where I've got to hold you in the air and twirl you around? They don't have to be that extreme, do they? So the tutorial we've just filmed are, are four simple moves that people can do. So I think the expectations people have, how right or wrong are they of choreographed routines? Yeah, definitely. I think that's a really important part. I mean, the first time you meet your couple, a huge part of that first lesson is listening to them. So asking what their expectations are, gleaning, you know, are there any set moves that you've, you've seen on YouTube, you've seen on Strictly that you want to try and achieve? And then making all those kind of realistic expectations with things like the dress, the shoes, the size of the venue, where your um, 
guests are going to be either seated or standing around you so there's lots of other factors that you have to put into it into the mix um, but yeah I think have the highest expectations you want to it's your wedding day if you want it full on then then do it full on but also think about the time scale obviously if you suddenly think oh goodness we haven't booked any um, lessons and we've got two weeks to go if you're only going to have one lesson a week, realistically, you're not going to get a massive routine in that time. You'll get some nice moves that will link together and you will still feel the music. But yeah, you're not going to be doing any sort of dirty dancing lifts in that <laughs> well, space. How, many, how much has shows like Shirley Come Dancing affected people's uh, mindsets and expectations around the first dance, do you think? They have definitely. I think it's really helped, actually, because I think people have gone oh wow that looks gorgeous let's go for it and I think as well with the guys from the guys point of view they can kind of see really cool guys really like sexy blokes on the telly and go actually yeah I'm going to give that a go I'm going to give it a blast rather than thinking oh you know they just look like they should come on in feathers or something it's going to be like really 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 manly which is what you want so I think I think in that respect it's helped but again those guys on Strictly are, well, A, one of them is a professional, and B, they are intensely training. They're doing like 12 hours solid a day of dance, 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 dance. So you're going to achieve different things to what we can achieve with just like an hour, an hour and a half a week. Um, and equally things like their costumes are made specifically for dance. So again, like we mentioned before, the element of the, um, the dresses, you know, you don't want your heels getting caught in your dress. So we, we can take that. It's always good to have a starting point. And then I will always cater. And I'll, I'll always put the moves in that they want to achieve, even if they're on a slightly lesser degree. But it's important that they get that. Otherwise, you know, there's no point in having a professional teacher. And is there certain dances that you would encourage beginners to dance more than uh, more advanced dances? dancers for example so like are there easier dance easier dances and more intermediate and more advanced dances um not so much because especially um first dance uk we each dance teacher um each routine is bespoke to the couple so so we've all got our our moves that we know will look lovely on a video on a photo so we encourage those moves if the couple are happy to do those kind of things um but equally I don't think that they um, are in a sort of uh, hierarchy of, of sort of achievement levels. To be honest, it's about meeting the couple, just getting them started. And it's a real kind of misconception that people say, oh, I can't dance, I can't dance. Oh, I'm, I'm dreading this. I've just got two left feet. I can't do it. And honestly, an hour with me, <laughs> Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. <laughs> This podcast is brought to you by The Wedding Film and Photo Company. We can take care of your wedding photos, videos, and even both at the same time. We cover the whole of the UK, so if you haven't booked your photographer or videographer, head over to weddingfilmandphoto.com to see what packages we offer. We also film every episode of this podcast, so head over to our YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook pages to watch in full and to see behind-the-scenes content. Our handle is at weddingfilmandphoto. Anyway, enough about that. Back to the podcast. So something we see a lot is the bride and groom say the songs three minutes, they get through one minute, and because they've had enough and they can't bear anyone else looking at them, they call everyone onto the dance floor, don't they? And they kind of force everyone okay. on everyone. And yeah. some people are like, yeah, yeah, usually the immediate family join them, uh -huh. um, just because they don't want to be the center of attention anymore, right? We see that a lot. Any tips on how people can incorporate that so it's not so much as like, come and save us, come and save us, how they can evolve everyone and end a first dance. For example, we saw one last week um, where like before the bride and groom started dancing, they were given like glow sticks and um, nice. there was like confetti cannons and all this. And then the song went into more of a dancey track and everyone came on and it was like dry ice and it was like more of a party and it transitioned really well. But then obviously sometimes you have just people pulling everyone onto the dance floor reluctantly. Yes. So I mean, how can people involve their friends and family in their first dance? Well, I mean, if you go down the, the route of, of lessons, um, you can book special lessons where we would do routines with other members of the family as well. Again, it's all time dependent on, on sort of the length of time you've got to rehearse. Um, equally, people can do that at home. 
Um, yeah, it's wise to have a few volunteers if you do want to go down that route. Because um, again, other people are reluctant <laughs> to get up. So yeah, you can incorporate. That's fantastic with the um, with the glitter cannons and everything. That's a really cool idea. Yeah, it looks really amazing nice. on camera. The, 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 I the bet. video and the photos phenomenal. are amazing. Yeah. Really cool, really cool. But yeah, there are ways of, of doing it. You can do like um, a flash mob style, you know, where your congregation get involved. That's obviously in the actual wedding ceremony um, where people can dance you down the aisle type thing. But yeah, from the point of view of, of bringing people on midway through the first dance, then there's, there's always ways around it where you can um, get the, a little set routine or just a little cue in the music, or you could finish um, your particular part with a lift, and then that's the cue for people, once they see that lift, to rush on and join in sort of thing. Or equally, choreograph it into it, embrace it. If you're gonna do it, then go for it. Um, I've had a, a couple of couples that have um, taken that to an extreme and sort of congered their way around everywhere to get people in or you've got the whole lasso bringing people in it depends what you want it depends if you if you've got that fun element or whether you want to keep it a little bit more formal yeah we had one last year as well where the um no one else knew except the brides the grooms and the bride and groom obviously and they'd been practicing for ages a full-on routine so they started just pretending it was just the bride and groom as a really slow song and then the record kind of went cool. and then it went into like I think it was like Treasure by Bruno Mars and then just everyone had this mad choreographed dance routine it was done. wicked that's it was really, really good cool. and they all, I think they were dancers and that's what they did but um yeah, I think you can definitely in include as many like as many people as you like in your Absolutely. first dance. Absolutely. I mean, don't be that what do they say? The only limit is your imagination. So you go for it, absolutely embrace it. You're only going to do it once, hopefully. <laughs> so um, yeah, just go for it. And don't, I think people can be a little bit um, almost too guided by what other people have done. Forget what other people have done. You want to make it unique to you and your couple and your day. So yeah, the sky's the limit, I reckon. And of course, it's not just first dance, bride and groom. There's other ones. There's, well, the most common one is obviously father of the bride dance. I guess that's a little bit different in terms of your approach to the first dance, no? Yes, yeah, I've got to say, um, not so many people go for the for the father of the bride um, routine now, which is, it, it's a shame. It's a nice tradition that used to happen. And then the, obviously the groom would, um, would get the bride's mother. So there's that sort of crossover. Um, but yeah, equally the steps that, the basic steps that we do, you could, incorporate with a father or mother so there you know obviously you take out certain elements that are a bit more romantic and specific to the couple but the the same sort of um, turns and the actual in the hold and moving around the floor can stay the same so it's just more about yeah whether you want to or you don't I find a lot of couples who have said from the first time we get in the first lesson they're like right we only want to do a minute and then we're going to get everyone on and that's all we're going to do and then by the end of the lesson they're like well maybe we'll do like two minutes and then by the end of the whole sessions they're like we are doing the whole routine no one's coming up and we're having the whole me moment to ourselves so again it varies couple to couple i guess you can be more restricted with the father of the bride dance if they're maybe a bit older bit more frail maybe you can't do as much maybe so maybe consider that when you're kind of coming up with your routine with your dad or your parental figure absolutely yeah take into consideration any kind of medical conditions definitely but but the same the same hold and just a gentle movement around um and and he can turn the turn the bride quite easily as long as he hasn't got any shoulder complaints but um yeah or even a low turn it all looks really nice and it's more about that sort of father and daughter moment isn't it so something that i'd like to talk about quickly as well is live music versus a recording when you're doing a first dance so something that i noticed last year at a wedding i was at there was they clearly had a it's only a simple routine but they'd, they'd obviously had something choreographed and it was to i think it was like a song from a film i can't remember the, what the song was now but they had a live band there and i could tell the live band were playing it at a different tempo to what the yeah. recording was and it was, I think it was even in a different key as well, which obviously changed the, changes the emotion of the, the feel, song. sure. How much should people consider that when they're doing, when they're planning for their first dance? That is something I say to every couple. I ask every couple, 
are you doing this? Is your DJ putting your music on or do you have a live band? Because if you do have a live band, you need them to pre-record it for you so that your choreographed routine is choreographed to their version of the song. Or you are really, really specific with your band and you say, we need it identical to the original version because there's nothing worse than getting to the routine and it and something sounding different, it'll throw you off. It's bad enough that you're doing your rehearsals in your lounge and then all of a sudden you're on a big dance floor with lots of people around. So I encourage people to sort of in their head picture their venue room and then almost picture where the sofa is, where the telly is and sort of transfer it over so that you, you have that feeling of comfort that you're still in your, in your lounge but you can see the landmarks of where you're gonna face at any one moment. And that's the same thing with the music. You need it to be as you have rehearsed. Otherwise, you know, you will have slight nerves on the day. You will have that moment of, oh my goodness. So anything that you can put in place to calm those nerves is a bonus. Is it, is it a safer bet, do you think, to eliminate the human error and just go with the recording for your first dance? Like, even though you've got a live band, just say for the first dance, we're gonna have the recording play instead? Or does it, do you think you should just go for it? And no, trust your band? just go for it. I mean, there's nothing better than live music, so you just can't top that. And you've paid for your band, let's use them. <laughs> but no, it's just communication. It's just making sure you've heard it beforehand. And as I say, ideally that you've choreographed or your teacher has choreographed it to that version, just so that you can really enjoy it and not be, not be worried at all. Okay, so before we wrap up, Susie, it'd be amazing if you could give us maybe three top tips of how people can improve their first dance. Sorry to put you on the spot here. That's okay. But let's see what you can come up with. Okay, so where the first and most important is believe in yourself. Believe you are the best dancer in the world because that will give you the confidence to get there in front of your guests on the day and smash it. So just totally believe in yourself and the rest will come. Second one, I would say, if anything does go wrong in the routine, remember it is only between you and your partner. So no one else in that room knows what steps you've rehearsed, knows what combination of steps have been used. So as the old saying goes, the show must go on. So smile, go for it. Even if you have a little stumble, style it out. Don't worry about it. And then the third and final tip, I would say is just enjoy it. Really, really enjoy it. You're only going to do it once um, unless you're asked for an encore. That has actually happened. <laughs> Guests have enjoyed the first dance so much they've asked it to be repeated during the evening. So that's quite a nice one. But yeah, just enjoy it. Embrace it. You've done all the hard work. That's the reason you've put a choreographed routine together is so that on the day you can enjoy it and not be worried about it at all. And have you got any things to avoid? Maybe one or two don't do's? Well, I'd say that the only thing I can think about, because obviously you're in a great place, you've rehearsed, you're ready to go, you're feeling fabulous. But the one thing I would say is just be mindful um, of not doing your routine with your back to your audience. So most venues, um, your guests tend to be in like a horseshoe around you or all the way around you. So if your routine's moving around, you will never be facing the back. But in some venues, it's very limited. The dance floor is one end and your guests are the other. So just make sure when you get in there, obviously if you've had um, professional lessons anyway, this will have been covered by your teacher, but just make sure any fabulous moves like a dip, or even just in your basic moves, you are facing your audience. Otherwise, I mean, they're just gonna see your back. And that's a shame when you put all the effort in. So that's probably the, the biggest don't, just take a moment to think about your room. I second that as well, because it always looks amazing if you've got all your family around you and you're facing the right way. It makes for great photos and great videos. So yeah, definitely that's a great tip. That's fantastic. Susie, thank you very much. That's, that's, been, that's been amazing. And thank you so much for filming that tutorial. You're um, more than welcome. I really encourage anyone to watch that tutorial if they're struggling to even know where to start with a first dance. Absolutely. Susie breaks down uh, th four, four, four basic dance moves and then puts them into a routine and shows you how you can do the same and just learn it from home. So I really encourage you all to go and watch that on our social media and on our YouTube. 
Susie, thanks so much for joining us today. It's been amazing. You're and, more than um, welcome. If anyone's looking for some first dance lessons, please look at First Dance UK. Brilliant. And Susie's the person to go for. <laughs> <laughs> thanks very much. Thank and, you so uh, much. We'll catch you all next time. Keep dancing, everybody.